Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike, Sunny Slope Garage. And today, we got something a little bit different than working on the C10. All right, so you guys may notice it's a little bit brighter in the garage today. Well, I have installed eight foot LED 5000K lights and it is a game changer. I have one more to install, but I kind of got this uh, piece of iron in the way and uh, I gotta get a little creative and get that last light in. But nonetheless, it is amazingly bright in here. I can see what I'm doing now instead of trying to rely on these LED uh, bulbs, these small bulbs that I got up in these sockets here. But what I'm gonna to talk to you guys about today and what we're gonna to cover today is this guy right here. My son's little side-by-side -side go kart that we wound up getting for free a while back, about last winter. And the problem with it was, is the drive gears on this thing were just, they were just roasted, man. And if I can get the, if I could figure out how to get this thing up, uh, there we go. You can tell. I don't know if you could see them or not. It's kind of hard to get down in there. But those bad boys, they're just missing teeth. And they are toast. My son can't drive the thing anymore. He's been begging me to get it up and running. And the only way that I can get this repaired is literally figuring out another way to transfer power from the engine to the drive axle because they not make those gears anymore and it's a cheap china made uh side by side and i can't get them reverse engineered without costing arm and leg way more than that thing is worth so my little uh idea is to make it chain driven now these sprockets uh they they come alone by themselves like this and you have to you have to purchase a hub separate so we purchased hubs we got them down here we're going to figure out the spacing on them we're going to wind up welding these things up and then putting a a chain in there and driving it chain drive but as you can see my shop is an absolute disgusting mess and before i even start welding anything or taking that thing apart, I've got to get this place cleaned up because can't work in these conditions. Can't work in these conditions. Okay, she, well, it's not spick and span in here, guys, but it is, uh, it's is—it's gonna allow us to do some welding without uh, catching anything on fire. So like I said, we're gonna take those gears off right there. We're gonna pull this whole axle, drive axle out, the back side here. And she is not easy to get out whatsoever. So it takes a little time to finagle those things out and because we got to pull those sprockets off there and then we have to take that shaft out we got to pull the motor jack it up so we can rotate that shaft out of there and uh go from there so i'm going to do all the boring stuff get out of the way i'm going to get the seats off um get the bolts underneath all loosened up all that stuff that you don't want to see so when i come back we'll have some working room in here we'll be getting ready to uh weld in the sprocket so give me a second now you can kind of get a better look at what we're dealing with here so you can kind of see these gears they're really missing teeth and when this turns it jumps makes this all jump out of whack so what we're going to do is we're going to weld sprockets onto these shafts and make this chain drive now there was a nut that was supposed to hold this uh gear on 
but the guy before me, he broke it off inside there. And I don't know <laughs> if it's a left or right thread. So trying to get something in there to easy out that out would, is almost impossible. I thought about welding a nut inside there, but I don't, I don't know which direction I'd go before I start busting that off. So what we got to do now is uh, we've got to start getting these chains loose and working this axle out and get this engine pivot back. Because it is a bear to get that thing out. But first I'm going to get some measurements. So... shop but as you can see we got the drive chains off we pulled the upper sprocket off and we loosened and removed the support bearings for the output shaft so uh, this is the part that is really challenging I taken the bolt out of this here try to get these out of the way uh, taking the bolt out motor mount bolt out jack the motor up because we're gonna need as much room as possible to get this uh this dry shaft out this axle should i say so uh it's been a while since i've taken it out and i can't quite recall really how it comes out i can't remember if i have to pull the axle off of one side or the shafts or the these uh gears off one side or not move this back up just a little bit more See what I mean? How it's just so tight and close in here. It's almost like I just need a little bit of room and I should have pushed this bearing out. There we go. Woo! There she is, folks. You notice I shed a couple layers off because it is getting warm in here with this furnace. Let's hope I got enough wood in it to last me until I'll, you know I can get some things done in here. But I'm gonna start measuring all the sprockets up onto the shaft, prepping everything, and we're gonna get to welding. So the other thing I gotta think about also is how this shaft is gonna go back, threaded back into the frame when I have my sprockets welded on. So I gotta be dang sure I go through some test fit runs. So if I weld them outside of the cart, uh, they'll go back in. Cause once you weld it, she's permanent. Well, semi-permanent. I lined my shaft up, tried to fit it back in there, but come to find out these, uh, these support bearing holders, these brackets here, they just won't allow it to go through. So I'm gonna have to cut that little uh, little C notch there out, cut those tops out, and hopefully I can get that in there. Now that bearing is supported by three uh, three bolts. So I'm not sure why they made a full circle. Um, maybe just for a little stability, but what I'm cutting out, it shouldn't make a difference.
Boom. You got her in there. it all up well we ran into a major snag and it's late on a sunday so i'm not gonna be able to fix it but i've got the shop all warmed up and everything's taken apart and i got all the tools out and everything and i just want to continue but it's one of those things where i'm not going to be able to unless i go a different route and the problem is is my sprocket down there the teeth are intergrinding with the other teeth i thought i had enough uh, i sized them out but the second sprocket that I bought that was smaller actually had a different hub size and it can't fit on the one that I have. So what I could do is I got to cut the gear, the set, I got to cut the center section of the gear out and weld it into the sprocket. It's not going to be fun. So what I did is I put my sprocket down on my gear spray painted so I could see what the edge was that I needed to cut out. So we're gonna try to get this cut out and then uh, burn it into the center of the sprocket because this is the sprocket that I need. I probably should wait till I get the right part, but eh. Well, we got it all uh, cut out, ground. And uh, we're gonna start welding this on here. And I already centered everything up, so everything should be center lined and perfect. All I gotta do is burn this nasty cut up little uh, hub on here, and uh, we should be good. Now, I didn't make it very fancy because, you know, it's just a cheap four wheeler. It probably won't last long, anyways, but we'll see what it does. Well, she's a little smoky in here. The boy came down to visit too. He's helping me work on some of this stuff of his. But let's show you what uh, what we got done so far. Now that little booger right there, we gotta we gotta hack that off. But so far, we welded the output shaft on a hub, and then we welded the back shaft here, the dry shaft or the axle. And all we gotta do now is put the support bearings in there with the splines heading out to the backs there and uh, we'll be fine. So, look at a smile on his face. Yeah, almost there. Just gotta put some chains on it and a lot of small stuff. But it's getting late in the night and I think that's gonna have to wait till next weekend. So, sorry bud, sure. next time. We got school tomorrow. I got work, he's got school. What time is it? Let's see here, we'll see what time it is. 7.12. Not too bad. But we got a mess to clean up. That's next weekend. You can always come down here and work on it yourself, you know. What do I need to do? You need to put the chains back on it. Well, first I you need to put the bearings this. back on the output shafts, put the splines sprockets back on the chains go to each tire bolt it all in put your seat in charge battery should be ready to go well so what is it <laughs> with these yep need to go here like you know short and here and yeah here. but they go yep but the other way yep those go on the inside. Inside? Like this. Oh, like that? Yep. We might put those back on. What do these do? Those hold the output shafts on the bottom. Then we gotta get the chain back on. Then we gotta put the motor mount back in. Either way, we've got a lot to do. And it's seven o'clock at night. And we got work and school tomorrow, so we will do it next time. This sucks. Change it. Alright, 
we are going to put it together. <laughs> Had to wait for my son to leave. I just want to surprise him. So, so far, I have the output shafts on the chain drives, both sides. The bearings have not been adjusted because they're slacking the chain still. I need there to be slacking the chain. I have to secure this mounting plate that swivels back the side that brings tension to these and holds it in place. And then I got to create the chain for this. Cut that little booger off. And then we should be in business. That being said, I'm going to start cutting the chain on this and uh, see if I can not come up short one link because it's a pretty big chain. Uh, I didn't do the count, so I might have a really loose chain, but we'll see. All right, let's see if we can do this without messing something up. I am one tooth off. I can't even get the gear ratio or the teeth ratio right on this thing. <laughs> Dumbass. Frustrating. I'm either, I'm either gonna be a, a link too short or a link too long. We'll put that in there and see how she runs. Yep, she's gonna fold in on herself. And she'll pop off. Hmm. Oh, if it ain't one thing, it's the other. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to change up my size of chain, probably. Or figure out how to, uh, put an idler shaft in there. Like a jack shaft. That's it for tonight. Can't figure this one out tonight. I'm not gonna try to force it. It's getting late, so I'm gonna call this video good. We'll come back to this. We're so close to getting this thing going, so stick with me. Cause uh, we have no money in this really, except for our hours and you know some chain and some sprockets. But that's pretty cheap for considering the fact. So I appreciate you guys watching Sunny Soap Garage, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Thank you.